I'm here with Noah Malgeri. He is running for Congress in the third district. So you have a pretty big district, actually. You're coming all the way, all the way down to Laughlin and, and that area uh, as all the way up to your, you live in Summerlin, I understand. We you, move, we live downtown now. Yeah. So I have lived in Summerlin okay. and I've lived down here in Henderson as well. Okay. But we recently moved downtown. But uh, yeah, it's a big district. I mean, we only have four districts in this enormous state, so they're all pretty big, a lot of ground to cover. All right. And you've been in the military. Tell me about your military experience. Yes, sir, I was. I was an Army officer. I uh, started off, I was commissioned as an engineer officer, and then later transferred to be a JAG officer after I graduated from law school. Ended up um, working as a, a plans officer in Europe and, um, and in the Middle East as a operational law attorney doing law of war during the Iraq war and, and courts martial and um, combat law in, in terms of rules of engagement, rules of the use of force, targeting decisions and things of that nature and international law. So it was an incredible experience. Got to see a, a lot of things. Got to practice law on three different continents um, and uh, learned a lot. That is very big. I mean, not too many people have gotten into that deep of military and discipline and actions and stuff. What, what, what do you see what's uh, facing America today? What's our biggest problem? That we have now the biggest problem we have right now is people are not awake to the biggest problems that we're facing in the sense that our ignorance is our own biggest vulnerability right now we're um, living in a fog of propaganda and lies and it's largely been effective much to our huge disadvantage and prejudice it's, it's, it's really going to prevent us from continuing to be the most prosperous just and secure country in the world that we it's this you know role that we've enjoyed for generations but all that is now um, in jeopardy and in peril, and that's been confirmed to be by a number of people. That's my own professional assessment, as well as people like um, General Michael Flynn, President mm -hmm. Trump's National Security Advisor, President Trump himself. That we're in, in the most dangerous period of American history, <clears throat> arguably ever, um, because we stand at the threshold of losing everything, our fundamental civil liberties, all the personal freedoms that we take for granted, like our access to free and fair elections. We've already seen that to a large degree, that's an illusion. As they steal elections, we have limited parental rights anymore. Um, we have limited healthcare autonomy to make our own decisions for ourselves. Our freedom of speech has never been so much restricted. But even more than that, <clears throat> our Second Amendment is in peril. But also, we're standing at the threshold now. We're actually in a war. The United States of America, for the first time in history, the United States is at war with Russia right now. Um, people don't know that. We're funding it. We're conducting a proxy war against the Chinese through Ukraine and Russia without the consent of the governed. We didn't vote for this. Congress never voted for it, but we're spending tens and tens and tens of billions of dollars sending it to, that does not exist, by the way. This money does not exist somewhere in an account. It's, it's imaginary notional money that they're borrowing from our kids. They're not even lending it to Ukraine. They're borrowing it from our kids to send one of the most corrupt countries in the world and um, to try to precipitate a, retaliate, a retaliation by Putin against NATO and get us into World War III which is actually their goal um, at this point. So we're on the threshold of World War III with three. We've been in, we just finished probably the end of the phase one of World War III and we're about to enter the hot phase of World War III. It's a very, it's the most dangerous time in American history in my lifetime, well more dangerous than the height of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. It's very scary. Um, this, let's come back home a little bit because what's happening with the second amendment yeah these shootings all you know all of which seem to share mm. some common aspects like questionable set of established uh, facts ever changing narratives very suspicion of unusual circumstances um, they're being exploited at the very least by people who are absolutely determined to disarm us because an armed population cannot be taken over readily you know right now the goal of propagandizing all these shootings and even permitting them, um, you know, sponsoring them in some in some cases, I'm, I'm convinced of, is in order to try to get people to voluntarily disarm and give up their arms, which is a one way street. Once you do that, there's no coming back from it ever. You can't do it temporarily. Anytime you give the government more authority and power over your uh, individual fundamental rights and more ability to control you and exercise power over yourself, your business and your family, you're never getting that back except with the guns that you just gave up. So we'll be in real trouble if we ever fall for that. They're in the, the phase of doing voluntary disarmament now through bullying and intimidation. The reason is because this, the alternative, which is compulsory disarmament, is a messy endeavor. And it's not a mission that most people want to volunteer for. Because if they come to the house and try to take you know, my weapons under some pretext of some false emergency that they've created, 
um, in violation of my rights, it's not going to end well. And um, the, 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 you know, the numbers on that don't work out over 100,000 encounters. It's just not going to work. I mean, that's why I say an armed population is like herd immunity against authoritarianism. What we need to do is I tell people, go buy more guns now, go buy more ammo, because the more you have, it serves as a bigger deterrent. You know, like having the strongest and most powerful and formidable military in the world serves as a de deterrent against aggressors in different countries from trying to take advantage of the United States or its allies. Well, in our population, takes it, it is a deterrent against government overreach, against the population. That's the whole point of the Second Amendment, by the way, is to prevent government overreach. It's not for hunting, it's not for sport shooting, it's not for target practice or plinking, it's not for personal enjoyment or recreation. It's to preserve your liberties and your freedoms for yourself and your family. Where does an 18-year-old kid get a gun of $2,500? Who's funding that? Who's, who's taking the time to give that kid the ammo, the bullets, the mission, and, and, and where to go? You know, a lot of people will say, hey, man, this kid just took it. He just, you know, he tried to buy it and he went out to try to buy it and, you know, he couldn't buy it. So tried to get his sister to buy it and, and now his sister can't buy it. And so he's going to go buy it and he waits till he's 18. He gets it. He goes, shoots up this stuff. I mean, where's the problem? What's, what's happening? What's yeah. happening to America right now? Yeah, there's a cultural decline, <clears throat> a spiritual decline. I mean, all these battles fundamentally boil down to a spiritual battle is what we're witnessing. It's just a manifestation and outworkings of what's going on behind the scenes spiritually. And um, there's evil, it's good and evil. It's not Republican versus Democrat. It's not liberal versus conservative. It's freedom versus authoritarianism and good versus evil. And, um, you know, people, they ultimately want to prevent us from worshiping the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this country. That's what they want to do. Because the reason is for them to rule, they need to have the ability to create fear and cultivate fear. And when you have uh, your faith in Jesus Christ, then you have no fear. And that means you're not easily rulable. Because the faith in Christ gives people immunity against fear. They have to get rid of that so they can create fear and therefore rule us. Because guns create an immunity against authoritarianism. They have to get rid of our guns so that they can rule us. Because freedom of speech allows us to communicate to each other and, and, and let people know what's really going on and share the truth with people. And that interferes with their ability to rule us. They have to get rid of freedom of speech. Because parental rights is the foundation of, of civil society because the family unit is the most fundamental form of government created by God, they have to disrupt that because that forms a foundation that, that, that does not need the government because it's self-sufficient. So they absolutely have to make us slaves in every sense of the word. Everything that they're doing now is a part and parcel of that whole thing. And the problem is now people are waking up on such a massive scale that it creates a very dangerous situation because it, a, a, an animal that's cornered and desperate will do desperate things. Mm -hmm. and now that's how the situation with the globalists now who run the world and our own government, our own federal executive branch and the Chinese Communist Party um, by whom Joe Biden is totally compromised. They, they, if they're cornered, will do something drastic because the alternative for them is if the freedom-loving patriot, patriotic Americans get back into power, that means accountability for them for past crimes that they've already committed against us, like the stolen election, et cetera. So they can never let that happen. And that means if they are threatened to lose power, they will prevent by any means necessary them getting disposed from power. That means creating emergencies, more pandemics, uh, World War III, et cetera. Where are we um, right now? It, families are trying to decide if they can buy the next gallon of gas or buy the next container of formula mm -hmm. for their children. Mm -hmm. What kind of economic structure is happening to America and what can we do to straighten that out? Mm -hmm. The first thing people need to understand is this is not due to incompetence and this is not this is not a failure because someone may, has bad policy ideas. OK, the fact that President Joe Biden, who's a fake president, appears to be somewhat of a buffoon from their perspective is a feature, not a bug, because it gives them a plausible deniability when they intentionally work to destroy America from within that they can blame it on the fact that this guy's incompetent. The reality is they're doing it on purpose. OK, everything is on purpose. And we're, we're in a cold civil war against our own federal government. And, and more accurately, our, our, our own federal government is in a cold civil war against the free American people. Free American people are the United States. The government is not the United States. The president is not the United States. The Congress is not the United States. The people are the United States of America. And that's enshrined in the Constitution. And the reality is they're at war with us. They stole an election, got into power, and then set about to systematically try to persecute us and punish us and abuse us, lie to us, propagandize us, harm our children uh, in order to weaken us and create an emergency situation and make us more governable and, and weak 
so that they can impose authoritarianism, which is happening globally. It's not just in the United States, it's in Western Europe, it's in Australia, you can see it all over the place. It's in Canada, Canada's already fallen. Canada fell like that. Australia fell like that. You know, we have the Constitution, we saved the world before. We might have to save it again. But the United States has to stand. And that means strong federalism, that means strong states' rights, that means individual liberties. Never give an inch. This is part of a global scheme. They're doing this on purpose. Do you think that do you think that ba that baby formula thing is an accident? You think all these blown up food plants are an accident? You think the invasion at the border is an accident? You think the fentanyl crisis is an, an accident? You think gas prices are an accident? You think any of this stuff, currency devaluation, inflation, you name it. Our own federal government is trying to weaken us. They're trying to hurt us and they're hurting our kids. And they don't care what the cost is along the way, as long as they end up in power at the end and, and we end up slaves. If you never let that happen, we're in the fight of our lives. This is World War III. People need to get, wake up and get engaged. Businesses are struggling today because they don't have the... They're coming off a pandemic. And because they're coming off the pand pandemic, they don't have the same ambitions and goals and playing field that they had before the pandemic. Ultimately, I feel smaller businesses are going to be pushed out. So it's just gonna be the rich and the extreme control. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely <clears throat> right. And, and you know, historically, the most powerful entities in the world have been the nation states, which governed and, and regulated the businesses and, and companies that did business within their borders. That's changed. Now the most powerful entities in the world are the global corporations which instead control the, the, the countries and they use the residual administrative capacity of the countries to rule the, the countries. And the, the thing is, what, what they're trying to implement now is a big, large-scale authoritarianism. And the way they have to do it is, there's several ways that, that things they have to do, but they have to destroy the currency because having your own currency it gives you some degree of autonomy and independence, right? So what they have to do is destroy the currency in order to implement a new type of currency, which is called the central bank digital currency. It's similar to crypto, but it's issued by the government and they can they can program it. So that means you get money and they can turn it off or on. They can put you in timeout based on your behavior, the things that you said on your show, the information that you spread, the guests that you had on your show, on your station, the people that you hosted, the advertisers that you accepted. They're going to say, we're going to restrict your ability, your money is going to be cut 75%, or it's only going to, it's going to expire in a week, or you're not going to be able to spend it on this and this and this. You're definitely not going to be spending it on, you're not going to be able to spend it on travel because they want to restrict you. They can put you in timeout and exercise police powers over you just by controlling your currency if they give you this central bank digital currency. But in order to do that, they have to crash the old currency, which is what they're doing now. Now we're past the point of no return on the national debt. And they're in an absolute frenzy to try to crash it as soon as quickly as possible. So we're $30 trillion in debt. Don't forget 10% of that 30 trillion is attributable to the 20 year war in Afghanistan would cost $3 trillion, during which we went to Afghanistan, kind of took the country away from the Taliban for 20 years. At the end of 20 years, handed them the keys back, said, thank you very much, we're done here. Here's all our weapons, $85 billion worth of weapons, you know, which they could have given to Ukraine, but we've got to spend another 85 for that now because you know you got to spend the money. got to spend the money. It's a fire sale now. People are just trying to grab everything they can off the wall because they know the place is burning. And, they, and you're a fool if you don't take what you can get. So these people here are looting and plundering the country because they're disloyal to the American citizens and they have no sense of service or loyalty to their to their oath or to this country or to its legacy or its heritage. So they want to destroy the country. They want to implement a central bank digital currency. They'll control what you can do. In fact, they'll give you an income. It'll call, be called universal basic income. And they're already testing it now. So COVID was a great example. Put everybody out of business, close all the small businesses, we'll give you the money, but eventually it's going to be a central bank digital currency. They'll give you money and they'll, you, how you spend it will be controlled by your social credit score. And that'll be a, a function of what you've said online, who you've invited over, who you're associated with, and so forth. Your behavior. Did you get your vaccines on time? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Did you teach your kids Christianity? Because if you did, you're going you're gonna to lose your money. So what they're doing is they're implementing authoritarianism. It's all in place, folks. It's all in the open. This is not conspiracy theory. They talk about it openly. They talk about it openly. Now, this is happening unless we get involved now and stop it. I wish I were making it up. I wish I, I wish I would, this weren't happening. You know, I wish I just watched Top Gun the other day. What a great movie. I remember the first one. was good. Yeah, that was really good. Really good. I saw the first one with my grandfather in 1986, just the two of us. <clears throat> I was uh, 11 or 12 years old. He took me. He just passed. And uh, I remember the 80s. What a time that was. You know, it's never going to be like that again, folks, unless we get in gear. I mean, we're in a whole new world order. And it's not it's not a conspiracy theory. Look, hey, I have nothing to sell here. I have no dog in the fight. I. I have some experience. I was an Army plans officer. I helped to plan, you know, top, write top secret plans for the Army in a skiff in the basement. I've, you know, practiced law on three continents. I've done a number of things, lived around the world, have law degrees from two different countries and two different languages. 
And I'm just telling you, my professional assessment is that's what's going on right now. And the, the trick is people need to wake up because a big way that this is happening and, and the way this is able to have happened is because of propaganda and lies. Essentially, it's an information warfare, it's psyops, keeping everybody intimidated, quiet, where, because we have commonality. I go around and I say this stuff on national television, on the radio, I don't care. I say it in crowds, everybody claps. They know it's true. When you, hey, courage is contagious. P people are ready now, they're waking up. The truth is outrunning the propaganda narrative. And that's really dangerous for us because that means the authoritarians have to do something desperate. The problem is they're not gonna let up on this and they're never gonna back down now. They're only gonna double down because they're overextended, okay? This is the main effort from a military perspective. It's no longer prepping the battlefield. They're in the mission. They're in the operation. It's go time. Past the operation's launched. So they're never going to back down now. They're only going to double down. That means, listen, resistance gets more costly every day. Next week, it'll be more costly than it was last week. Six months from now, it'll be way more costly. And a year from now, it'll be too late. Now is the time to stand up. Well, look around. You trust your gut. Talk to your friends. Don't be afraid. You're an American. Exercise those rights today because tomorrow you might not have an exercise. And the only way to quit this, the only way to stop this is to use the rights that we have today. We, we're going to lose tomorrow. By the time we lose them tomorrow, we'll never get out. Why should people elect you? Well, you should elect me because I'm the only veteran in this race. I understand exactly what's going on in the world and I'm willing to tell you so publicly exactly what's going on. I'm willing to acknowledge the truth and give you real policy proposals to fix things. I have a fundamental understanding of the, the, the significance of the moment in history that we're in. I'm ready and willing to go forward and fight for America, just like I have in the past. I'm the only person who fought for this country in uniform in this race. And I would love to go to Washington, D.C. and try to save the country and get us back on the right course for our children. Noah Malgeri for U.S. Congress, Nevada's third district. Noah for Nevada.com. Thanks very much.